Hello, in this presentation I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks for using the charting features in Google Fusion tables. So what I've done um, currently is create a new Fusion table and I am in the process of importing the one that went with the tutorial with the butterfly caterpillar data. So I'm just going to finish that process here. And once it loads in the page, um, I just want to review with you the types of data that you can see in the various columns um, because that will have an impact on the kinds of charts and graphs that you can create. So um, there's kind of, in general, um, several different categories of data. So data could be text-based. Data could be um, a graphic or an image of some kind. It could also be numeric. Um, and then it could be date-time information. Numeric information can have all kinds of different types. It could be a currency value, so something that relates to money. It could be um, a percentage value. It could just be a straight up number. So you want, you want to kind of pay attention to those different kinds of data. And then the um, other kind that we've in, um, included in here is geolocation information. So latitude and longitude refer to geolocation um, data. So each of these different uh, columns you can see represent a different piece of data about the um, um, this particular species of butterfly that was observed. Each row then is one set of that data or one um, grouping of it. And if we just take a, a look at a couple of these, so for example the sex column, if I click on the drop down next to that you can see that there are some options here so I can do things like sort A to Z. If I do that, you'll notice that a number of the rows are blank. Then we have a group that are female, and then finally if I scroll further down, we have a group that are male. So that's a very structured type of textual data um, that I can use for some of my categories in charts and graphs. Um, same thing would apply to, for example, the primary ecosystem. If I sort uh, based on the primary ecosystem, there's a couple that are blank, but then we have cloud forest as one of the options, dry forest as another, and then rainforest as the uh, last kind of option. So those are, again, very structured information. Things like the year column and the date column here, that's date time information. Elevation and wingspan are numeric information. And then, like I said earlier, latitude and longitude are geocoded information. So that all plays um, into or has an impact on what kind of charts and graphs you create. If I click this red plus up on the top by the tabs, I'm just going to add a chart here. And, you know, Google just tries to take a guess at what you might want. Um, I'm going to go to one of these um, bar charts and give you, um, walk you through creating um, some examples. So first of all, um, one thing to be aware of is that the data that you're going to see right away um, is going to be um, one bar here for each row that is in the um, data set. And so when it says maximum category is 10, what it's doing is saying that it's displaying the first 10 rows. So if you want summary or to be able to combine information about those rows, then you have to check the summarize data box up there. So when I do that, then I can select a category. So um, here I'm going to select the, um, where did it go? The sex of the species. And now you can see that I have summary information about um, the sex. So I have my count of how many were blank, which was 16 rows. Then I have the 33 rows that were male and the 38 rows that were female. One thing I'll point out is that remember how male, female, and then this blank, those were all, um, the sex column all had text information. So count, and um, Google should hopefully, the Fusion Tables tool should hopefully display this for you. Count is really the only kind of summary um, function that you can apply to textual data. If you want to know things like what's the average wingspan by sex, so does a female butterfly have a larger wingspan than a male butterfly or is it vice versa, then you can apply those kinds of functions, average, sum, min, and max, to um, columns like elevation and wingspan because they're numeric data. So I'll just click on the um, average wingspan here. And you can see for the um, 16 rows where it was left blank, the average wingspan, 
wingspan in millimeters was 56, um, just over 56 millimeters. And then here you can see the average for males and the average for females. So female wingspan was just a little bit higher than male wingspan. If you don't actually want to see the count of how many of the males and females there were on here, but just the average wingspan by male and female, then you can uncheck that count box and it will um, disappear, leaving only the average wingspan. All right. So what this allows you to do is to um, create charts and graphs. Um, you can have um, you can create them using summary data. So by combining all of the rows, or if you wanted to use say like the top ten values or something along those lines, you could set that up as well. Um, let's see, you want to make sure you select the appropriate category here and then apply the appropriate function to the type of data that's there. If you were going to do a trend chart over time, then you would be want, wanting to be looking at making sure that your um, x-axis had a date column of some kind in there and that your y-axis then represented um, some kind of numerical value that could change over time. Okay, I'm going to um, also just show you this change appearance button. So when I click on this, what it allows me to do is set a um, um, set up my chart in terms of the uh, title, the x axis, that kind of thing. So here I will call this average wingspan by sex, and that is my chart title that you can see shows up. You should always have a chart title, and you should always try to uh, label your axes. So here it says horizontal axes. I can um, put a label in there. You can see that show up down at the bottom. I will click on left vertical then and put over here. Uh, wingspan and millimeters like so and then you can see that show up on the left hand side. Um, you can adjust how many lines there are, whether or not the legend shows. If you only have one set of columns you don't need a legend displaying. If you have multiple columns and multiple colors then you should include a legend. But big things always have a title, always label your axes and then use a legend if you have multiple data points. So I'll click OK. Um, and when you're finished setting up your chart, don't forget to click the Done button. So I'm going to click Done here. And um, once that is um, selected, then that means that it's going to become a permanent tab on your Fusion table so that you can always go back and look at it. If you forget to click the Done button, it doesn't save. So just remember to click Done. All right. If you need to edit it after you've created it, created the chart, there is a drop down here where you can click back on change chart and it brings up the same dialogue that you were in before. So those are just a couple uh, tips and tricks to get you started working with Fusion Tables um, charting tool. If you have questions, make sure you talk to your instructor about it.